Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about something that is very much related to the idea of forces and that is something called pressure. Now to begin with let's look at a quick video of something that looks a little crazy called the bed of nails trick. Now in this you'll see this professor is lying down on a bed of nails and seems to be just fine as opposed to that apple that just dropped in there which clearly got impaled by those bed of nails yet so far he seems to be fine. Now watch this. His assistant has put another bed of nails on and is now standing on him. So, he seems to be perfectly fine, not getting hurt at all despite all those nails. How's that working? Pressure is the amount of force applied over a certain area. Or the way we can calculate pressure um, is doing just that, force divided by area. P representing pressure, F representing force, A representing area. And the unit of pressure is either the Newton per square meter, which sort of comes from the equation, or the standard unit is a capital P lowercase a, standing for the Pascal. So, pressure is force divided by area. Again, the units kind of make sense because the unit of force is the Newton, and A, representing area, is in square meters. So having a unit for pressure of Newtons per square meter does make a lot of sense. Um, but again, the unit that I will use, which is the standard unit, is called the Pascal. Now if we look at that, though, let's look at how this equation breaks down. Clearly, if I relate pressure and force, it shows that the more force I have, the more pressure is applied to that particular area. But the greater the area is, the lower the amount of pressure must be. So what does that mean? Well, that must mean that pressure is directly proportional to the amount of force and inversely proportional to the area in which it applied. So basically what that means is, if you were to double the amount of force you apply to a certain area, that would double the amount of pressure applied to that area. However, if you were to increase the area over which you now spread out that force, that would actually cut the pressure in half. So again, force and pressure are directly proportional, area and pressure are inversely proportional. So, how does that relate to what the professor was showing there in his video? Well, let's look at a different video example here. So this idea is to demonstrate uh, pressure. Um, pressure is defined as the amount of force over the amount of area at which the force is applied. And this relates to something called sort of the bed of nails trick. Now, as you can see here, we have a single nail. Okay, uh, The area would be simply the area of the tip of this nail that we put anything on top of it. So I'm going to place a balloon on top of it there. Now, the pressure, again, is the force over the area, the area being the tip of the nail, and the force being essentially the weight that we're going to apply to that nail. Okay, so right now it's just the weight of the balloon and this sort of wood block on top of it. If I add some more weight to it, I'm going to increase the pressure. And that increases the pressure so much that, of course, that it explodes the balloon. Let's see that again in slow motion. Now, let's change the situation. In this case, instead of one nail, I've added a lot of nails. Now, each one has its own individual area, but added together increases a number of times the overall area at which we can apply any force. So now, let's put our balloon back in here. Now again, the force being applied here is simply the weight of the balloon and this wood block on it. Now last time when you saw when there was a single nail there, when we put this heavy weight on, the balloon popped right away. Notice now it doesn't pop. And simply by increasing the area over which the force is applied, the amount of pressure 
on the balloon has decreased dramatically so that it no longer pops the balloon. So you can actually add even more force. So now I've even dramatically increased the amount of force, but again that increase of area keeps the pressure low enough that the balloon doesn't actually pop. And this is how the bed of nails trick works. Simply by distributing your force over a much larger area, the pressure is greatly reduced. If we consider the video we just saw, in the first example we had a single nail which has a very, very, very small little area sitting on top of it. And then we had our balloon, which has a certain mass sitting on top of it. If you consider the idea of a free body diagram of that balloon, you have the weight acting down, and because there are surfaces in contact, you do have a normal force acting up. That weight is the force that is directly applied to the nail and that's where the pressure is applied. So if pressure is force over area, well that force that's applied is equivalent to the weight over which it's applied. And then the area is the tip of that nail. Okay, so what you end up having is a you know regular force, of course a large one once you put those weights on top of the balloon, but such a small area, and since the area is so small, the pressure is very high, high enough to easily pop the balloon. But in the next example that you saw in the video, and much like with the professor, you have a lot of nails. Now, same idea with the balloon initially. So I have not changed the force. But by adding all those nails, I've allowed the area to greatly increase. In this case, 20 times. In the case of the professor, it's hundreds of times greater than a single nail. And so by increasing the area so by a, such a large amount, the pressure dropped and the balloon didn't pop. And even though when I actually then increase the mass, or when that assistant stepped on the board the professor was under, even though that would increase the pressure, the area was still big enough to keep the pressure low enough so that it doesn't actually hurt anyone. Pretty neat, isn't it? So let's look at an example of this. A four kilogram paint can with a radius across the bottom of five centimeters sits on a table. Determine the pressure it can apply to the table. Now, gotta be careful here. It doesn't matter how big the table is because the pressure is only applied where the paint can makes contact with the table. In other words, the pressure is only applied to that area of contact. If we consider then what's happening here, the force must be equivalent to the weight of the paint can because that's what's being applied to the table. Now, again, there's a normal force, but that's not being applied to the table that's being applied by the table to the paint can. So the pressure here, which is the force over the area, well, the force is based on the weight of the paint can. Now, the area depends on the shape of which is applied there, and that's a circle, and the area of a circle is bound by pi r squared. So, mass of the paint can, 4 kilograms. Gravity we will use is 10 pi. The radius, well the radius is 5 centimeters, which if we convert is 0 0.05 meters. Okay, and just that is squared. And we get 5,093 pascals. Now, is that a little bit of pressure? Is that a lot of pressure? The pressure on the air that sits on us from the atmosphere is actually something like 100,000 pascals of pressure. Um, and it doesn't feel like a lot, but actually, you know, it is when you consider the entire atmosphere is down on top of us. Um, of course, we would feel this paint can more directly than we would feel the air, but so that's a reasonable number for pressure. Pressures are often large numbers. 
Let's look at another example. Let's say I have a brick, two kilogram brick. Now, a brick is a sort of rectangular cube, um, so it has a base that's 20 centimeters, um, a width of about 7 centimeters, and a height of about 5 centimeters. If I place this brick in different orientations, it will have very different pressures. For example, if you just look at it right now, pressure being the force of the area, the force due to its weight. Now the area would be, in this case, its length times its width. Okay, so 2 kilograms, gravity of 10, it's 20 centimeters long, 0.2 meters, and 7 centimeters wide, which is 0.07 meters. So at this orientation, it has 1,429.6 pascals of pressure on whatever it would sit on. However, if I were to turn the brick on its side, well, that's still 20 centimeters there, but now it's the 5 centimeter part that is in contact with the table. So the new pressure, well, the weight hasn't changed. The weight of the brick hasn't changed at all. But now it's 0.2 meters times 0.05. And now the pressure has risen to 2,000 pascals, simply because I've reduced the area over which it sits on. So greater pressure. Finally, if I were to turn the brick, well now the 20 centimeter part's not in contact, but the 7 centimeter and the 5 centimeter parts are in contact. The new pressure, well again the weight of the brick hasn't changed, but now it's 0.05 and 0.07, and it jumps up to 5,714 pascals. Okay almost five times the pressure of what it was in its first orientation. Okay, so again, you can see that as the area gets smaller and smaller, even without any change in weight, the pressure that the brick can apply gets larger and larger. And that's basically all you need to know really about pressure. Pressure is directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to area. As forces go up, pressures go up. As areas go up, pressures go down. See you next time.